title of the message this morning is taken from Galatians chapter 3. If you've got your Bibles, you'll want to get it open to Galatians chapter 3. We're going to begin in verse 13, Galatians 3 and 13. The title of the message is Redeemed from the Curse. Redeemed, just so that you English grammar experts know the definition of redeemed, means to gain or regain possession of something or someone. Bring me down just a little bit. To regain possession of something or someone in exchange for payment. When I say today redeemed, I'm talking about someone paid a price for you. Amen? Galatians chapter 3, read with me, beginning in verse 13. Hear what the word of the Lord says. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Verse 14, That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, let me bring clarity right away to that verse 14 where it read that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Go back in the same chapter, Galatians 3, and read with me verses 6 and 7. Galatians 3, verse 6, it says, Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye, verse 7, therefore, that they which are of faith, are you of faith? I saw a couple hands there, okay. Are you of faith? They which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. I want us to keep that in mind so that when we talk about being redeemed, we're talking about the blessings that by inheritance through faith in Christ, we know that we have the rights to the blessings of God, just as Abraham was blessed. Are you following me? Stay in this same chapter, and I want us to turn to verses 28 and 29. Galatians 3, 28 and 29. Read with me. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Verse 29. And if you be Christ, if you are in Christ, then, hear it now, are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise? Do you see our promise? Do you see our promise? And what we, you and I, have inherited because we are the redeemed of the Lord. 
I want us to make sure we, we get that because go to the next screen here. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, and we'll also read verse 21. It says this, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all th things are become new. Verse 21 Listen close. For He has made Him to be sin for us. God made His Son to be sin for us. Who knew no sin? Jesus Christ knew no sin. Yet, that verse 21 said, he has made him to be sin for us. That we, you and I, might be made the righteousness of God in him. I'm telling you, there's some powerful, powerful words that we just spoke here. Go to the next screen here. Now, to get understanding in these Scriptures that we have just read, the Scriptures that said we are redeemed from the curse because cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. We also said the blessings of Abraham are ours as children of faith in Christ. And the third thing we read already this morning is that Christ was made sin for us so that we could be made righteous through Him that is Jesus Christ. So to get and cement that understanding into our hearts here, I want us to turn to Numbers 21. I want us to go back in the Old Testament there 21st chapter of Numbers, beginning in verse 4, we can begin reading of where it talks about the curse. Okay? Numbers 21, verse 4. Say amen if you're there. Amen. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. Verse 5. And the people spoke against God and against Moses, saying, Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loathes this light bread. you realize they were eating bread from heaven? They were eating manna, God's food brought to them. We loathe. Why are you just bringing us out here to this place? You're, you're just trying to kill us. They were speaking against God, and it also says then against Moses. Verse 6 says, And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We've sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Can you get a little bit of a feeling that there was no obligation for Moses to pray for anybody at that time? Yet, 
the grace that was on his life, saw what God was doing and needed to do. And instead of saying, you guys have been complaining, you guys have had everything given to you, you everything I do, you just sit there and bring up accusations, everything that happens, you think it's against you. I'm not going to pray for you. You deserve to die in the wilderness. That could have been his response. And as a man of God and with the authority that he carried, as a child of God, he could have said, Lord, have your way. But it says in Moses, without question, without stop, without pausing, prayed for the people. Now listen to what he did. This is important. Verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looks upon it, shall live. So Moses made a serpent of brass, put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. We see that same type of a thing in medical offices, do we not? Where the pole and the what looks like a snake uh, wrapped around it. It has become universal in the medical field. But it has its origins right back here in Numbers 21, where God Almighty instructed Moses to put a serpent. Get that. Put a snake. Why couldn't he put a koala bear or something cute or something you know, that would be fun to look at, okay? No, very significant. He said, put a snake, put the serpent on it. Go to the next screen, please. I want you to keep that in mind as we flip forward now in the Word to Deuteronomy chapter 21. Deuteronomy, 21st chapter, we're going to begin in verse 22 and hear what the Lord says here. Deuteronomy 21, 22 says, And if a man has committed a sin worthy of death, and he be to be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day parentheses for he that is hanged is accursed of God that thy land be not defiled which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance we all understand that death Sickness, disease came through the fall of man. Yes? And in Numbers 21, when the people spoke against God and against Moses by complaining and murmuring that they were afflicted with fiery serpents, and it says much people of Israel died. But God... Moses prayed for the people. The Lord instructed Moses to make a serpent of brass, put it on a pole, put it on a tree, put it upon a cross. And anyone that looked upon it would live. Now catch this. Jesus Christ hung on a cross. A tree. A pole, which thing was declared to be accursed of God. The serpent 
wrapped around the pole, around that tree, around that cross, represented that God was cursing the one that was destroying them, that is, Satan. Did you catch this? The serpent wrapped around that cross, around that tree, represented that God was cursing the one that was destroying them. He was cursing Satan. When the people would look upon it and acknowledge, they would live here. Now let me give you some New Testament confirmation. Go to John chapter 3, verse 14. John 3, verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now most of us know John 3, 16 which comes right after that, which is declaring in the 14th verse that we just read, just like Moses lifted up that serpent on the pole and the people lived, even so must the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, be lifted up on a cross, on a tree, be cursed, become a curse, so that the Son of Man could be lifted up and glorified. Verse 16 of John 3, we all know, for God. Why did he do that? For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave. He gave of himself. He gave of his only Son so that that curse could be lifted. Jesus Christ bought, He purchased our redemption. Can I get an amen? And like we have already read in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, it said, for He has made Him to be sin who, for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Jesus became sin for us so that as Jesus was hung on that tree, He destroyed the things cursing you. Hallelujah. I'm preaching good news. Sin is now cursed. Why? Because we're a new creature. All things are made new. Which means that the curse no longer has power over us anymore. Oh, we need to get this. We need to understand that. We need to speak it. We really do. We are redeemed from the curse. We are redeemed from the curse. That verse needs to take on whole new meaning for us. We started out. We are redeemed. Galatians 3. We are redeemed. We've been bought. Someone took possession of us when we surrendered our lives to Him. Someone bought us, paid a price, and now we can say we are redeemed from the curse. Go to the last screen, please. Just as it says in Psalm 107 and verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. For His mercy endureth forever. Amen? Verse 2.
Verse 2, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on. Why, why would it be so important that our words be spoken? It's because that is what activates our faith in understanding that I am redeemed from the curse. Let the redeemed... I'm redeemed from the curse. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Because it's truth. Whom He has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Didn't we just read? That's what happened on that cross. Jesus became sin who knew no sin that we might, you and I might be made the righteousness of God in Him. I tell you, it is good news. It is power in our lives if we will understand that that curse no longer has dominion over us. Romans 6 and 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but you are under grace. Amen? And Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 says, And He has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's where I want to be. That's where I will confess I am. And because we are seated with Him in heavenly places, we can declare that we are redeemed just as it says in Proverbs 3 and 23, excuse me, Proverbs 3 and 33, that says, the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but He blesses the habitation of the just. And we see that blessing confirmed in Proverbs 10 and 22, where it says, the blessing of the Lord, finish it for me. It maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. We are redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God is good. Hallelujah. Now here's one more nugget of getting a hold of just how blessed we are. Turn with me to Leviticus chapter 25. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for all of your word. Leviticus 25. Leviticus chapter 25. I'm going to read first in verse 3 and 4. Six years shalt thou sow thy field, and six years shalt thou prune thy vineyard and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year, verse 4, it shall be a Sabbath, of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard. I wonder what's going to happen now. You get a year vacation. Well, that's a pretty good employer there. Okay? Keep reading with me. Verse 18 of Leviticus 25. Wherefore, ye shall do my statutes and keep my judgments and do them, and you shall dwell in the land in safety, and the land shall yield her fruit, and you shall eat your fill and dwell therein in safety. And if you say, verse 20, if you shall say, what shall we eat the seventh year? Behold, we shall not sow nor gather in our increase. Verse 21 then I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year. <laughs> and it shall bring forth fruit for three years. Now, I'm telling you, that's how good our God is. And you shall sow the eighth year. Keep reading, verse 22. You shall sow the eighth year and eat yet of old fruit until the ninth year. <laughs> until her fruits come in, you shall eat of the old store. <laughs> because of the blessing, 
Because of the blessing, we have provision. And we have fruitfulness. Plus we have safety. We just read it. The Lord instructed the children of Israel to work and sow in their fields for six years, but then pause in the seventh for a rest upon the land. And I know there is parallel to the Sabbath, and I know there is parallel to the rest, and it's a whole nother, whole nother day and a whole nother time. But here's the point. In the natural, that plan would would not make sense. Tell me anybody that's going to work and then all of a sudden, okay, in 2024, you're going to take the whole year off. And then what? Yeah, Yeah, okay, we'll do that. Yeah, we'll do that. God... He hasn't changed. The Word says, does He not? I am the same yesterday. I'm the same today. I'm the same forever. And what He has promised then, what He did then, is good now. Now, does that mean everybody's going to take off year 2024? I mean, God willing, yeah? Okay? God willing, yeah. You betcha. But what he's getting us to see is that our God is so good that because of our yielding to Him and doing what He says to do, He will bless the fruit of our labor. Amen? Come on, can I get an amen? He'll bless us so abundantly that we would have to have enough to carry us into the ninth year. Why? Because we're redeemed from the curse. Because the blessing of Abraham has come upon us. Well, I'm not a Jew. The blessing of Abraham has come upon us. Gentiles, there is no Jew nor Greek. You are blessed of the Lord. You can say, I am redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. The blessings of Abraham are ours because we are new creatures in Christ. And you know, in Deuteronomy 28, we can read the first four, 14 verses of the blessings of obedience that we have every right to claim and to pray and to declare. And if you've never done that before, I would highly recommend that you take Deuteronomy 28 and pray it. Are you hearing me? I have seen and I can testify right here that my wife with Hands and disease on her skin. She confessed daily the promises of God that I am not cursed. My hands shall be made new as the flesh. She had a verse. I'd hear it every day. She can quote it to you. And she held to that and her hands are totally restored. Hallelujah. We give God the glory for what he does, what he does. And just as it's written in Romans chapter 8, verse 31, he says, what shall we say to these things then? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things. Yeah? And consequently, the remaining verses in Deuteronomy 28, verses 15 all the way through 68, 
where it lists every evil thing. Understand, we can resist the devil. And like the Word promises us, submit yourselves therefore to God. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he must flee from you. Why? Because Jesus Christ became sin for me that I could be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. Don't ever forget that verse. Those verses in Deuteronomy 28 list the curses of poverty, of lack, of sickness, of disease, of fear, of depression, of chronic illness, of generational curses. You can go through every one of them and be amazed at some of the things that it even lists. And you think, well, that's a curse. Mildew is listed as one of them. (laughs) It just ain't right, okay? So, come on. It's a curse. They all have no right to be in me, is my confession. We need to follow the kingdom mandate that was given us in Genesis 1.26 where man was given dominion to rule over every living thing. Amen? And He commanded them that you've been made in the image of God. Now, have dominion in this earth here. When we speak our blessing, when we speak the words of the promises of God, they carry power and the authority that's backed by heaven. And I know that there are some that would say, well, I know this, that the Lord has has told us to pick up our cross and follow Him, so I'm just going to carry that burden that's rightfully mine to carry. Where did that come from? I can tell you, sounds pretty good. You know, I'm just going to carry my cross. Okay? But if you read where they're pulling that from in Luke 9, 23, Mike, Jesus said, and He said to them all, if any man will come after Me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. (laughs) And if we read it all, the verses that follow it says, for whosoever will save his life, verse 24 of Luke 9, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away. You see, Jesus presents the choice between clinging to our former lives or letting go and entrusting our new lives into His care. Amen? That's why Paul wrote in Galatians 5 and 24, he said, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. The fact that we must take up our cross daily means that we must lift that cross beam every morning and crucify our carnal flesh, our carnal nature, all the way through the day until we go to sleep that night. Then the next morning we rise and shoulder afresh those things that we have to bear, crucifying the flesh again. Jesus Christ has redeemed us from the curse. Today we're going to take communion. And I'd like for it to be very simple. Because number one, this little cup that's got the most awful tasting little thing on the top of it there 
okay, is totally insignificant in comparison to what really, really it means. Truly, if we were going to follow as at the Passover, we would have an elaborate feast. We would have so much more than this little thing right here. What am I saying? Don't let this offend you. Okay? Don't let the size of this offend you that we're not really capturing all what happened on that day when Jesus Christ stood at that Last Supper and He said, I've desired this day, this time to be with you because this is only a small representation. We do it because Jesus said as often as you do it and gather in my name, remember what I've done. There's so much more than this little cup and wafer. There's so much more than us doing it on a regular monthly basis. We don't have to do that. Because God honors what's in your heart and in the sincerity of what you are doing to understand that by His stripes I've been healed. He's honoring when we understand that Jesus Christ said, I'm the bread. Eat me. He's honoring when we take a moment together and say, Lord, I acknowledge that You are the one that gives me life and that You are the bread of life. And He honors when we drink of the cup. It's barely a swallow, but it's representing what Jesus Christ wants us to remember. And that is, my blood was poured out for you and I want you to drink all of my blood we're talking about a life we're talking about a relationship we're talking about understanding what Jesus Christ did for us we're talking about having understanding that when he said as we began today I've been redeemed from the curse. And today as we gather together here, I'd like for us just to take that top layer off here, put the wafer in your hands here, and in silence, acknowledge, I am redeemed from the curse because His body was broken for me. Can we take the bread together? Hallelujah. Lord, I believe your word. I receive your word. I thank you, Lord, that the curse is lifted. And if there is anybody in here that has any chronic illness, any pain, any situation, clear in the name of Jesus Christ. Healed in the name of Jesus Christ. It's not complicated. It just isn't. Jesus Christ said, as often as you do, do this in remembrance of what I did for you. 
let the redeemed of the Lord say as we take and carefully open up that last part there Jesus Christ who lost more blood than we ever could imagine he poured it out for us so that we could have life and life everlasting and could proclaim I am redeemed from the curse of the law and I thank you Lord Jesus Christ that you were made sin so that we could be made the righteousness the righteousness that means something the righteousness of God hmm. let's take it together Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. He is so good. He is so good.